Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm just hanging out outside today. Was uh, reading, and it's just such a beautiful day. Uh, I was like, just really getting some clarity on some things, and I thought I'd share. And I really don't like to wear my glasses on camera, but it's so bright out here. I'm squinting my eyes like really bad, and it's kind of hard to read some of this stuff but what I wanted to talk about is and I wanted to be really clear on this really concise is the rapture and really how a lot of people are deceived a lot of people have been lied to and you know there's movies out I've watched some of the movies where you know they show these events and show all these things that are going on about the rapture but I want to talk to you um, about what the rapture really is because right we know about in the day of Noah there was a flood that came people were eating and drinking and then you know the flood happened and then Noah was saved and you know all the other people who didn't prepare they you know were drowned and then Sodom and Gomorrah Lot the angels came took Lot out and then you know once Lot was removed you know fire and brimstone was rained down on the city and then even Lot's wife, she turned around, right? She looked back, and then she was turned into a pillar of salt. Okay, so, and then we get to, if we start in Luke 17, he's talking about, uh, or Luke 17, 30, he says, Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So what is this day of the Son of Man? That's, we kind of have to understand that. If we don't really understand what that's going to be and there's no clarity on that, then you can misinterpret everything that this is talking about here in just these few short little verses. But first off, this is a spiritual event. This is not some kind of a physical event that's going to happen. And, um, you know, that's not what it's going to be. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my camera here. And I'm going to have to turn it off because my SD card only has five minutes left. And I'm going to need probably more than that. So this is not some kind of physical event that's going to happen. This is a spiritual event. But the day of the Son of Man, um, the best thing I can compare that to so that you can understand is in Hebrews 4 where he talks about the day of rest. There's going to be enter into the rest right he's telling you to this is the most important thing in your life to do is to enter into the rest and he's saying that you're you, we're in, entering into the promised land right and you know the things in the bible in the past they were about the physical in a sense and were kind of a shadow of what was to come right so we know and this is how I can prove to you and show you this is not a physical event. This is not what it is. Um, if you go to 1 Corinthians, Paul's telling us that there is a physical body and that there's a spiritual body. Right? You got the physical and the spiritual bodies. And, right, the first man, Adam, became a living being and the last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. Right? And the Son of Man, we're entering into the rest and entering into the promised land. And you know what that is? That's Jesus Christ Himself that you're actually entering into. Okay? That's what we're entering into is that. That's the day of the Son of Man. And the day of the Son of Man, this is not some 24-hour event that's taking place. This is not some event that's happening in like one day, one 24-hour day. This is something that's already been taking place. This is something that's already been happening. You know, as we walk out our spiritual life, if we're, if we're not totally deceived, we can kind of see that this is what's been taking place. This is what has been happening, is that as we walk out our life, as we walk out our life, this is what's been happening with us, right? Um... He says, In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. So what is he talking about there? If we go back to Mark chapter 4, 
I can show you in the parable of the sower where he's talking about the seed that was sown among the thorns. And then what happened? It's somebody that they're the ones who hear the word. So it's somebody that hears the word. It's somebody that's already hearing the word and already has it and has been giving a been given some of that, right? Been given some of that portion of Jesus Christ to understand. But then what happens? The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word. So all of these things choke the word out of your life, right? And that's what is taking place in all of our lives. We're entering in. We begin to enter in, we, which entering in is hearing the word. That's what that is, right? That's the ones who hear the word. You begin that process of that happening when you begin to hear the word. You begin to enter in. But God doesn't just take us and take us all the way in. No, this is a process that happens for most of us. And what's happening is, is we have certain trials. We have tribulations. I'm going through trials, you know, right now in my life. At certain times, still dealing with thoughts. And what are the cares of the world, right? The cares of the world. The desire for other things. They choke the word out. Those are thoughts, desires, things that are in our mind. So that's why we're supposed to be taking all of our thoughts captive. We have to take our thoughts captive and take them captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ, which means be still and know God. And then we can enter in. And then this is just so good because he's, he's telling us straight what's going on. He says, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. So you're going to be given more, right? If you take heed. For whoever has to him, more will be given. So you have to already have for more to be given to you. So what's he exactly saying there? It's kind of like you stay. It's getting through the trial, going through the trial, and staying in that place of original faith, and staying there, taking all of the thoughts captive to Jesus Christ, and not allowing them to influence you and choke the word out of your life. And if you can stay in that place then that's where you go. This is from Mark 4.25. He says, Whoever has, to him more will be given, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. He's just saying the same thing again that he said in the sower of the parable of the with the thorns. He's saying if you're not going to have more if you turn your back and you look back. You know, turn around and look back at your old life and start worrying and getting into the cares of the world and worrying about money and getting into riches and you know desires and other things it's going to choke the word out of your life so then how can you receive more you're not going to get any more if you do that because there is no promise you know to get, to have more if you're not going to be a good steward with what God already has and you're not going to obey him why would he give you more you're not going to get any more so what are you getting more of the kingdom of God. Look, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. So that's what you're getting more of, and that's what we're entering into. And that's what the rapture is. If you go back to Luke 17, 31, he tells you right here, In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. See, this is just a metaphor. It's not talking about some 24-hour event that's going to happen. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. So don't turn back. Once you begin to hear the word, remember the parable of the sower we just read? Once you begin to hear that word in your heart, stay there. And if you stay there, you're going to have, and then God's going to give you more. Because more can be trusted with you because you're holding on to what you have and you're not turning back to the cares of the world. You're not turning back to try to seek after riches and place other things before the kingdom of God. <laughs> See how simple it is? But God's going He will reveal these things to you as you begin to walk in this, and it's so beautiful. So that's what's happening. And then he even tells you, remember Lot's wife? <laughs> remember Lot's wife? She turned back, and then what happened to her? 
This is Luke 17, verse 32. Remember Lot's wife? She turned back around, tried to look back, and tried to go back to the old life. And then she turned into a pillar of salt. And that's exactly what's going to happen to you. You'll die. Because look, the spiritual body is more important than our physical body. The physical body is going to die. Right? Wherever the body is, there the eagles are going to be because it's going to die. But our spirit is going to be eternal. So we have to stay in that. We have to continue to allow God to add more and more unto that so that we can awaken to the kingdom of God and begin to enter in further and further into the rest. And the more we stay there in that place, the more God's going to give and the more we're going to have and the more we're going to have and then... It is, it's, it is like a rapture because we're awakening to a new kingdom. We're awakening through that rest. We're entering in to a new promised land, which is a spiritual place that we dwell. You know? And that's what's going to happen. And it's a beautiful thing. And God is doing it right now. And He's been doing it. Okay? The rapture's taking place. It's not a physical event that's going to happen in a 24-hour day. It's already happening with your life. That's what he's saying here. So don't try to preserve your life, right? Don't. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Okay? You can't save yourself. You can't save your body. And you can't do it. God is going to add these things unto us as we obey Him and we stop caring about the world and we stop worrying about those things that are choking out the word and then God will grow us right into the kingdom it's beautiful man and it's just so awesome so that's what's taking place amen it's really good it's just so good and uh, I was thinking there was something else I wanted to say but you know I think everything's been said I think everything's been said on this and pray to God, ask God about this, and you'll see that what I'm saying is right. What I'm saying is true. These other people are wrong, and they're lying, and they're deceived themselves by other people that have taught them things, and they're teaching some kind of a physical rapture, which is not going to happen, because the body's not going anywhere but into the ground, and our spirit is what's going to be raptured if we continue to follow God. Okay? Amen.